Hello, I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions. We welcome you to this program, which is destined to provide you with a biblical perspective on life's many complex questions. We have shared your viewer questions with local ministers for their answers, and today we're joined by a panel of those ministers to get their insights on your questions. Let's meet now Pastor Tim Benjamin of the Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's. He's senior pastor there. We're also joined by senior, pa uh, pardon me, not senior pastor, <laughs> not maybe yet. someday. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Um, Parker Miley, who is a student intern at Wayne Street United Methodist Church. So he is right along with Pastor Benjamin there. Then next we have Pastor Tim White of the Lima First Missionary Church. He's senior pastor there. Rounding off our panel, we have Pastor Brad Taylor, senior pastor of the Lima Community Church, where he is executive pastor. We're happy to have all of you with us today. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. All Good to be here. right. Now, as we, we go into the, the program today, you, of course, know that we, we take viewer questions, and we've been getting a lot of questions to answer, and so this is what we're doing today, answering the questions that you have sent us. Now, the question I'd like to go to today, one of them, I think, would be question number five. Here's what I have. Let's start with that. Someone has asked me if I am young earth or old earth. I didn't know how to answer that. What do, you, what do these terms mean? Young earth versus old earth. So what do you say? Go, go ahead. Go Absolutely, ahead. Bill. So I think young earth and old earth are terms that are um, talking about, obviously, the age of the earth. And, mm -hmm. you know, there is some uh, contention about whether the earth is only a few thousand years old, which some people believe the Bible seems to imply or whether it's many, many millions of years old, which many people believe that science implies. And, um, you know, I think it's regretful that we, uh, we feel like that these, um, these things can't be in conversation a little bit more. You know, I think that we've got uh, um, so many uh, places where science and faith uh, the world wants them to butt heads a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, don't, I don't think they have to. I know that there, at times there are, are places of tension, uh, but that tension is okay. They can, we can live with that tension and, and ask some questions. And, you know, I don't think that, um, that faith and science, we don't have to choose one or the other. Right. Um, I think one of the primary questions, and we talked about this a little bit last week uh, as we met, but one of the questions that we ought to ask is what is the what is the purpose of the creation story in scripture? And I would, I would say that the purpose of the creation story is not to historically accurately say exactly what happened day by day, as much as it is to communicate a truth about who God is and that God is creator. Mm -hmm. And that within that, there's a lot of room for um, interpretation and sure. for you know science to... Um, you know, to be understood as yeah. something that is a language of God. So, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. I, I've always thought that the purpose of the creation story was to say whatever it was that God is here. The bottom line of the creation story is God was responsible for God it. God created. Yeah, God created. Right. right. And uh, and that's the important thing because uh, you know there, there's there's a lot of pieces that we see in the world that aren't necessarily accounted for in those seven or six days, I suppose. And uh, so so the idea is is where where do they come from? Where did they fit in? And, and so, you know, God was, God was the driving force behind it. And, and without, it, without him, we would have nothing. You know, that wouldn't have happened without the direction of, of God. So I, I think that, that we really cheapen the argument when we do what you said, when we make science and religion, you know, like, like two heavyweight fighters right, in a right. ring. Uh, I, I think they're better off when they work in conjunction with each other, again, as you said. And, and I, I believe that that, that works well when we realize that whatever way it happened, that, that there was a driving force behind it. I cannot stand, it just drives me up the wall, the idea that, that a lot of these scientific theories say we were an accident. Mm. So everything was an accident. And if we're just an accident, then who cares what happens? Everything is irrelevant after that. Mm. It doesn't matter what you do, you're, you're just a lucky gob of genetic goo. And I, I just, <laughs> I'll, I'll never buy that. Well, it's I, I the theories is the problem. Yeah. The theories. Uh, science, as you indicated, Pastor Brad, science, and God and faith and religion do not have to work apart. God created everything. He created science. God's the author of all science. 
what, what you're talking about is man-made theories. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we're talking about young earth, old earth, unfortunately, in that man-made theory of the old earth, we see the absence of God. So when we as believers see uh, science pull in their theories, pulling out God mm -hmm. and claiming that over millions and billions of years, everything just happened, we, we get a little defensive. <laughs> and uh, so it, it's the man-made theories, I think, is what we're, we're all up against, as opposed to science mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's interesting that man, in, in the state of depravity that we see the world is in, continues whenever it can, whatever opportunity it can get, to take God out of the picture, mm -hmm. to remove himself from God, uh, to our own detriment um, because you know the scripture has so much to say about the, the blessings of his presence mm -hmm. of his presence and we've got to this is where we come in as, as, as leaders to put that presence back in there mm -hmm. and keep hammering away at that and, and loving the world at the same time you know yeah. uh, God sent his son into the world because he loved us he loved the world and, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, that message has to get out there. You, you, yeah. You're so right in what you're saying, and you too, when you said it's not like two boxers in the ring. Right, right. Yeah. But we've got to work together on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and to add on to um, I, I like we cannot deny the fact that um, a lot of these theories and ideas take away our God, and um, that's a problem. But I also see another problem behind some of these things is it, it clearly makes two different groups in the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We we have one group that believes this and one group that believes that, and and, and they will not mesh together. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it just creates another um, well, your your doctrine's wrong and your doctrine's wrong and your doctrine's wrong. I believe um, some of us might view differently on on all of this, whether mm -hmm. old right. or new Earth, and we can both have a civil conversation and understand that. Um, we, we will never know. We might not know. But um, that means no reason as to say someone is com corrupt and, and, and so forth. Um, right. I believe it is, um, it is, yes, it is a piece of division, but we should not let it become so far to where we start making, you know, our own churches and our own worship services designated for people who believe, you know, old earth, new earth or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, right. I think um, some of the problems in these things is it's just another thing that causes division amongst Absolutely. the church. There's plenty of that. Yeah, plenty yeah, of that. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you said that, Parker. I want to come back to you to lead this next question off. Um, does your choice of friends affect your faith? And I'd like for you to deal with that from the youthful perspective mm -hmm. that you have. You're, mm -hmm. How old? I am 18. 18? Okay. I'm a, yeah. And then we'll talk to these older gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. Yeah, yeah, I was right. 18 that's one time. Right. Yeah. 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 Long I think time I was ago. too. Yeah. Yeah. Not so long For ago, me. Brad. For me. Oh. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. but, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I am, I am 18. I'm a senior in high school. And, you know, it, we get it drilled into us that, um, you know, the people you hang out with, the people you spend your most time with is the group that you will eventually turn into. You know, that's been preached to, I'm sure, all of you as well oh, yeah. um, when you were in school and even continuously throughout your life. But um, that is, plays a crucial role, especially in, in high school, we see kids not take that to heart. We see a lot of, I see a lot of my peers not understand that, um, you know, a, a Christian, obviously you shouldn't say, well, I'm just not going to hang out with that group because you hate anyone, no. Um, but um, there's a certain mission and project behind what a Christian life uh, is supposed to lead. And um, if we hang out in the wrong groups, it's easily, it's more easy for us to just simply fall off. Mm. We, um, we, I, I mentioned in the um, last episode, um, the straight and narrow path mm -hmm. and how that, that's used often, how it um, works quite well in the um, Christian faith. Uh, that path becomes very tricky to follow if your um, companions and people you're traveling with in life aren't on the same path. Right. Yes. I mean, it's um, called peer pressure. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> um, um, it happens all the time. It happens in, in school, college, life, work, mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that um, the people we spend our time with and the people we trust and have, um, and have um, meaningful relationships with, if they don't have the same kind of intentions that we do, mm -hmm. well then we don't really have a meaningful relationship, yeah. I guess if I can say that. We don't have a healthy relationship. And to, and to not respect that mm -hmm. or not identify that is dangerous, really. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Parker, the way you said that, that the, if the people that are, the companions on this journey with you mm -hmm. are not of like mind, mm -hmm. it's going to be easier for you to stray off the straight and narrow. It's just, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. maturity and, and it's a great, yeah. that's a great insight. Yeah. I think one yeah. of the challenges that we see in, in the church today is that often um, there, I think there are a lot of people who follow Jesus who don't have any friends who don't follow Jesus. Mm. And that's not a great way for 
uh, for us to change the world, you know? And so it's, I think it's that um, our small group actually just had a discussion kind of about that balance for our teenage children Mm -hmm. to find between choosing the right people who will be a positive influence and being a positive influence on those who don't know the Lord or who, you know, have made other choices or have other priorities in life. The question, uh, does your choice of friends affect your faith? Really, your faith should affect your choice of friends. Right. Because when I came to the Lord Jesus, I remember losing a lot of the old companions. And uh, and I picked up uh, some other companions and some friends. The other key word here in the question is the word friends. And I suppose we could have a whole civil debate about what friends, we talk about friends, I I, I look at that as those uh, special few in our life that we can confide in, we can seek counsel from. And certainly we want to seek counsel from other believers. Mm -hmm. We want want to make sure that we are like-minded there. Uh, th- those are quite different from the companions that we right. that we pick up along the way or and acquaintances, acquaintances right, that right. Um, that we have to be transparent and to be able to 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 bond with one another mm-hmm. and to be, right. become a friend. Uh, our choice um, uh, in faith, placing our faith in Christ, should should absolutely uh, affect our choice of companions and friends. Yeah, and I think back to back to Parker's point from earlier, and I agree with you 100%, is, is uh, some of those companions we have around us because we have them there not as a confidant, not as a fellow companion, simply as a, uh, somebody to, that we can influence over them and try to help them uh, steer off a, a dangerous path they may be on. We're not bringing them in to follow them. We're inviting them to follow us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus asked a very important question. Yeah. Who is my brother? Yeah. Who mm-hmm. is my mother? Yeah, he absolutely. made it very clear yeah. that yeah. It, it stretched well beyond biology even. Right. Yeah. And who is my neighbor? Who is, is another my question yes. right. that he asked in, in one of his parables that yeah. was... Yes. And they're all referencing in those because um, you know, we cannot do the mission. We cannot build a church if all we do is hang out with people who are already in it. You know, we've all been called to, you know, you know, build the church, grow the kingdom, and so forth. And we can't do that if we don't go out to those people who, you know, to where we can be the example, to where we can be the light in their life and everything. Because yeah. sometimes in, in, the, in, in, the, in the desire to protect ourselves, we become the priest and the temple assistant, mm-hmm. where the Good Samaritan is the one right. who actually helped. Right, yes. right. You know, and, yes. and, I, and, I, and I understand there's a time when we got to say this relationship is too toxic for me. I, obviously, that clearly happens. But there are other times when, when uh, you know, a little influence over another person might be a good thing for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't, you don't want to discount one. At the same time, you want to make sure who, wh- which direction the influence is going. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, listen, we're going to pause for a break. And when we come back, I'd like to deal with peer pressure, in, 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 taking it to the next level. Uh, how do we deal with it in terms of today's politics and all the awareness of this identity versus that identity, this identity versus that identity? How do we deal with that as Christians and maintain, uh, maintain our testimony? We'll deal with that and more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, thank you for staying with us. Back to our uh, prestigious panel now. Um, what, what about peer pressure that comes by the way of even politics and not just political parties, but other kinds of politics? There's politics about COVID. Surprise. There's a great yeah. misconception about peer pressure is that when you turn 18, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. is false. Yeah. Right. Uh, peer pressure is something that, that everyone deals with. And uh, we see that in our world today and that uh, there's a lot of pressure brought to bear to try to get everybody to uh, be on a certain side of pick your issue. It doesn't even matter what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going we're gonna to cancel you. We're going to take your job away, take away your livelihood, <laughs> or we're going right. to stalk you on Facebook, or we're going to do all these things. And, uh, and, and sometimes you got to persevere that stuff. I mean, yeah, people who are in yeah. the public light, like, like we all are, mm-hmm. uh, those things are going to happen. 
and they're going to come along. And, and, and there are times I'm getting accused of things. I have to have somebody explain to me what it even was because I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and all those things are going to happen because people are always trying to exert influence. And if they don't feel they're getting that opportunity, they will force it upon you. And that's where peer pressure comes from. Yeah. And, and you, your response must be Christian. Absol absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that now, but Christian doesn't mean passive. No, Christian, it doesn't. Christian simply means I'm probably not going to drag you behind the church and teach you a lesson. Okay, that's probably <laughs> what that means. But, but, but at the end of the day, the idea is, is that we, we want to maintain what we claim to believe. And, and it's only going to, ma or at least it matters the most when you're under pressure. So if you say, I believe in grace and I believe in love and I, and I, and I think that, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to let you step on me, but I'm not going to mm -hmm. step back. Right. And, yeah. and, and step back on you, I mean, mm -hmm. right. and, and, and that can become very dangerous. But but you've got to you've got to be able to be strong in the convictions that you have, have courage in your convictions, because the world I mean, that that's Satan's whole whole gig is to try to knock people off of what they claim to yes. believe. Go back and read Job. It's exactly yeah. what Satan was trying to knock God off of what he believed. Yeah. So uh, the idea is, is, is we need to be able to stand firm and have courage in our convictions, because as soon as we don't. And we don't have them anymore. They don't exist anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and I think in our world today, there's a lot of pressure out there to try to get people to compromise on anything they can mm -hmm. get compromised mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I feel like we live in a very dangerous time. Sure, you know, we're not, uh, you know, burning people at the stake and things like that. So obviously it's, it's different than what it used to be. However, uh, we do live in a time where there's a lot of desire to pressure people into, into seeing everything our way. And, yeah. I, and I, I feel like... That, that puts a lot of pressure on, the, especially those of us who are in the public eye, to, to be able to maintain you know, the courage and our convictions. Because honestly, we, if we as leaders don't, then how in the world can we ever expect anyone else to? There, there's pressure on the Christian, for instance, to, uh, to accept uh, abortion, mm -hmm. uh, to accept uh, gay rights, those kinds of things. And that, gee, if you, if you don't do this, you're, you're a bigot or whatever. And that you're not you're not with it anymore. I mean, these are the these are the new times. These are the new days. You're into that old stinking thinking. Yeah, that's what they will say. Yeah, see? you know, Tim, you at the at the end of of your comments there, you talked about our responsibility as leaders. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, a friend of mine who's a pastor over in Columbus just gave me this beautiful illustration of the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And if somebody had, had walked into that room that wasn't familiar with the situation, uh, who would they have thought the leader was? <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been Jesus, <laughs> right? And yet he was, that was the choice that he made. And that, I think that's our calling as, mm -hmm. as leaders who follow Jesus is that we are to serve. We are mm -hmm. to exhibit the fruit of the spirit. We are to have yeah. uh, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness. But realistically, you're dealing with yeah. egos. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's well, what you're speaking to. And, and that's yeah. what the dangerous part of, uh, of peer pressure is, is peer pressure is always about trying to get us to move a fence. The problem is we don't always know why that fence was there. And, and one of the, 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 the famous things I've heard is, is if you're moving a fence, you better make sure you understand why it's there because a bull might come out and right, explain right. to you why the fence yeah. is there. So, so and I, I think that's what peer pressure is trying to do. Well, this, this standard doesn't matter. Yeah. This idea doesn't matter. This belief doesn't matter. Yeah. Yep. You know, this standard doesn't matter. And then you move it and suddenly all this crazy stuff starts happening because the fence isn't there anymore. Well, we've been doing it this way for 100 yeah, ex years. Exactly. So. And, and, that, and that's what makes peer pressure very dangerous. Satan uses that to try to get us to pull up fences that need to stay. Because, uh, uh, yes, there may be times we need to kneel on the floor and wash the feet. Abs absolutely, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. Right, right. But at the same time, uh, in doing that, we're doing that to, to hold a standard because we want to be very careful. The more standards we remove, yeah, we right. may not understand why those standards were there in the first place and what that's going to lead to. Yeah. And, and, and we see a lot of results of that today of, of people being harmed mm -hmm. seriously, you know, spiritually or even physically because... They uh, have moved a fence and they didn't know why it was there. Perhaps, they moved the boundary, didn't know why it was there. Perhaps because it, it's been that way for a long time. Yeah. And somebody looks at it and say, well, that's just nothing but tradition. Let's just get rid of it. And like you say, they don't know what's really behind right. it until it is removed. But when you're doing the way of the Lord, something that he has already commanded you in the Bible, and, mm -hmm. and even though it was 2,000 years since Jesus taught, and even more than that in the Old Testament, if God made it into a law, and I don't mean the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. but if God made it into a law, you've got to keep doing that because short of that, there are going to be consequences. 
the pressure we're talking about is not exclusive to peers. It's it's a mm -hmm. it's it's oh, everywhere. Yeah. It's society. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. society. Yeah. it's everywhere. Yeah. And and so so important the support of uh, believers and, and each other, uh, having the support of a church that uh, that is rooted in truth because truth is actually the counter distinctive of, of of all these pressures that we're mm -hmm. we're seeing. Yes, true. And so, uh, you, a, a Bible based uh, fellowship that uh, that believes and lives what they teach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is so important that others can see and feel like well they're not being ostracized from society uh, that there is there is safety mm -hmm. and, and a shelter there yeah what peer pressure does is what, what i find or like societal cultures as, as you mm -hmm. guys just mentioned mm -hmm. is it takes away individuality yes, and what that no and what doubt. that produces is is if we all start to think the same if we all like group think if we all start to believe mm -hmm. the same and and think all this and that well then all of the advancements that come from original thought and one person um, and of having their own mind and having their own opinions and everything, well, then we lose all the yep. uh, societal advancements. Mm -hmm. how, will, um, how will we soon um, learn to um, make, you know, we made a computer. We, you know, we, we have a lot of advancements in culture mm -hmm. and society. Mm -hmm. And all those things will go away if we all th thought the same, if we all had mm -hmm. the same, uh, if we all were pressured into thinking the same way and believing the same way. So there's, there's mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of harm behind um, being pressured in and, and caving in to um, certain situations and pressures in society. Mm -hmm. yeah, so good. bottom line that's is that's our, our, our believers need a lot of support and encouragement to stay the course. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely, yeah. so okay. important yeah. that the well, church I, function. That's right, and I think that Healthy. for believers to understand that especially in this day and age when vitriol is just everywhere, that there is something to be said for kindness, for charity, for civil discourse, you know, for the ability to, to speak to somebody that you may disagree with, but recognize that they still bear the image of God mm -hmm. and, are, and have dignity, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that um, the, the world is missing these days. And as believers, we ought to be the ones who bring that back. Yeah. We all have spiritual gifts, you know, uh, pastoring, teaching, you know, leading, um, hospitality and all those things. Well, if, if all the pastors were to say, well, all of you need to be pastors, well, then, <laughs> then the, the faith would not be able to withstand, yeah, you know. Right. If pastors pressured everyone to be a pastor, well, then the faith would not have right. the same foundation. The body has separate There's, parts. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. Is, and it's no one's business yeah. to make it someone who's been gifted with hospitality to say, well, you need to be a teacher. We need to be a prophet or, or, um, or anything else. You know, individuality is in the sense of, of especially Christianity itself, of having your spiritual gifts and taking grasp of those, that's an important thing to um, building the kingdom. That's right, uh, peer pressure it becomes, a, becomes a, uh, an anti-gift mm -hmm. in that it, it, you're right, it takes away the great uh, diversity, the great color mm -hmm. of God's mm -hmm. kingdom. Mm -hmm. It makes everybody the same. I never thought of it that way before, but that's a, that's a great point. It is. Yeah. Well, let's, let's turn to another question. We've got oh, less than seven minutes left here. We're, we're rolling right along. Uh, my friend's son has fallen away from God. She told me that since he was baptized as a child, that saved him and he will be okay and will still go to heaven. And, that, and, the, and the viewer asks, is that true? Mm. Yeah, the, the part of that question that's bothered me since you, we first sent it out and then we had our, our pre-production meeting, we talked about it, is, is uh, we're talking about somebody getting saved. There's this child who's fallen away from the faith, talking about getting saved. And I didn't, I didn't hear Jesus' name in there anywhere. Uh, I, 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 fe I feel like it's missing a, a very serious component about the demonstration of faith, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what it takes to, to uh, be a part of the kingdom here on earth. And that is living out a demonstrated faith. And I don't know that something I did years ago is going to be, do it today. I mean, ba baptism is a wonderful thing, but it's a response to something else, a change that needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that belief is there. The belief that, that baptism alone is, uh, saves you. Uh, baptismal uh, regeneration, I believe that's what that's called, where... In other words, you're, you're not regenerated until you've been baptized. That presents a lot of problems, though, for people like Abraham, the thief on the cross, <laughs> David. Uh, how about the paralytic? That, uh, okay, that presents a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, but baptism is an important step of obedience in a life of a Christian. Mm -hmm. Baptism never saved anyone. The Bible is very clear what saves us, and that is our faith and God's grace coming together. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I believe that we should be baptized. I believe every one of us should, should be doing that, but um, 
requiring anything in addition to faith in Jesus right, Christ exactly. for salvation is a works-based salvation. I don't subscribe to it. Anything added to the gospel, uh, a, a, you know, the, the, anything added to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our faith in that, and faith in, in the substitutionary Lamb of God taking away our sins, um, it's works. Well, mm -hmm. if that method worked, then what we yeah. should do as, as pastors, if, if, that, if that method worked, is we should just go get some super soakers, <laughs> bless the water, and run down the street yeah. and blast everybody, yeah. if, if that's all it would take. And everybody could be uh, saved at birth when they were right. baptized right. as an infant, right. and uh, there would be no accountability, no repentance. No church. There would be no, mm. no, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. everybody, would be, everybody would be saved. Those are, those are, that's the part of the criteria you just mentioned. That's the part of the criteria in coming to Christ that you, you just described there. Mm -hmm. Repentance and, go ahead. I see almost like bold letters around these couple words in the question, fallen away from God. And, 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 and obviously, Jesus Christ, you know, you, we cannot deny the fact and the faith, that is, of, of believing what he did on the cross and everything for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is God. That was an act of God. The fact that um, the question, I don't know if it's just worded in this way or not, but fallen away from God, I think the answer is, is kind of clear for the rest, for the response to this. Um, yeah. we, there is not a um, very strong faith if someone doesn't have any, any relationship with God, with Jesus, and, and the work that he did on that cross. I, the answer um, to me is is uh, all summed up in that one uh, mm -hmm. couple line in the question. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. It's an excellent point. Yeah. And, and I, I think, Bill, first of all, sometimes I think we, we as panelists here forget that these questions are tied to people mm -hmm. who they care are. about, you know, this, yeah. Is, yeah. this is a question from somebody who cares about this person mm -hmm. who has fallen away mm -hmm. from God. And, mm -hmm. and just to speak some encouragement to that person who is out there and and there are I'm sure there are many all of us have people in our lives who have decided oh, to do something different right absolutely. and um, you know just that encouragement to continue praying for that person to um, to be a friend to them it, yeah. you don't have to you know hammer them with your Bible but just to be a friend and come alongside and be a support to them mm -hmm. I think um, you know just that reminder that there's still a lot of good you can do in that sort of situation Tim you uh, you identified something in the question that troubled you mm -hmm. and I've got and and Parker you really did too there's something that troubled me in the question too and and it is the idea that will this person still go to heaven? And, you know, the, um, I've used this sort of analogy before, but in my years growing up, a generation ago, you know, I kind of got the idea that um, the reason you get saved is cosmic fire insurance, mm -hmm. right? You just want to avoid hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just that reminder that the abundant life Jesus has for us is so much more. And, and the question of whether somebody will still go to heaven ignores what we can have today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just an important yeah. insight. Very well put. We're all out of time. Very well put. Yeah. And I nice certainly yeah. pray that uh, your comments today will be a tremendous blessing to our audience. I, I believe they will. And we thank you for coming and sharing for these last two weeks. Happy to have you. Pleasure. Thank you Thanks so much. much. Well, that's our program for today. And, of course, I'll be back again next week with another panel and uh, more of your questions. So keep sending them in. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly life life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.